So uh, we're sitting here looking at a uh, issue of Cigar Aficionado. This is the October 2015 issue. And uh, of course we're staring at Robert De Niro there, giving us a, a smirky look. <laughs> De Niro is the man, he's awesome. Uh, but anyway, I'm kind of making this video because I want to talk about this publication. Uh, ever since I first got into pipe smoking and cigar smoking, um, I've been told by numerous people to, to subscribe to this. It's great. I heard about it. I saw there was a bunch of covers. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger is a huge uh, cigar guy. He's in there. There's a lot of different celebrities. Um, I think the first time I ever heard about this publication, before I even was smoking pipes and cigars, was a documentary on uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And they were just showing he was on the cover of it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's a whole, whole uh, magazine dedicated to cigars. So... Um, Cut back to about two weeks ago, I got a random email from JetBlue uh, saying that I accumulated some flying points uh, from, from using them for flying. Now, I don't fly very often at all, but the, uh, the two trips I made in the last like five years, I guess, gave me enough points to get a couple free magazines, which is cool. I could have used it, I guess, towards another flight, but I have no, no plans on flying anywhere. Uh, so I picked the magazines. I ended up getting um, Cigar Aficionado for a year, and I also got Time Magazine, which is another publication that I'm interested in, in reading. So anyway, uh, I have to say I'm, I'm a little disappointed in this publication. I really thought that it would be like 100% about cigars. And uh, although they, of course, do have their section rating cigars, talking about them a little bit, which I obviously appreciate, um, just like every other publication out there, not every other, I should, but the vast majority of them, it's just advertisement. So we're going to look through this uh, together, and you guys can experience what I experienced when I first opened this up. I was very excited when I got in the mail. I'm like, this is great. And I'm like, oh, man, De Niro. How awesome is that, right? So there is uh, a good chunk of this that's dedicated to an interview that was done, I guess, with the um, publisher of Cigar Aficionado. We sat down with, uh, with Rob De Niro and, and talked about stuff, which is great. They didn't talk about cigars much. Um, <laughs> it's a great little article. Uh, but it's about him, you know, it's not about the cigars he loves, you know, it, I just, I wanted more cigar, I guess is what I'm getting at here. Uh, I figured the cigar magazine would be nothing but cigars. So anyway, let's flip through. All right, first thing we're greeted with, cigar? No, it's an ad for Hennessy. <laughs> so that's that, Hennessy 250. All right, ah, a cigar ad, very nice. Arturo Fuente, very nice. Um, but just a generic, hey, Buy our cigars. Okay, contents, you can pause there if you want to read that. We have another cigar ad. Okay. Um, more information as to what it is, uh, what's in the, the book. The highlights here. Now this is what I really want to see is, you know, what different cigars are rated, a little information about them. All right, we'll agree with another cigar ad. Monte Cristo, the 80th anniversary. So, like, as I'm flipping through, I'm thinking, like, yeah, that looks good. You know, might want to pick one of those up, try those out. Now, we're greeted with a, another booze ad, Sapphire. Now, we have a little thing on De Niro. Pretty interesting. It's a picture his father uh, painted. Robert De Niro Sr. says, uh, he's standing here in his New York apartment in front of Woman in Red, which is a 1961 painting by his father, Robert De Niro Sr., with cigar aficionados Marvin R. Shaken. Shankin. Shankin, maybe. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that's who did the interview with him. So a little bit of information on him, then it flips back to another ad. Alright, there's Vince Vaughn. Join the Stogie. Cigar ad, which I totally understand. It should have a bunch of cigar ads, you'd think, right? If you own a cigar company, you would want to advertise in Cigar Aficionado. So no surprise there. And I do like the ads because it exposes me to new cigars I wouldn't have been thinking about before, as well as new stuff that just came out. So that's cool. I'm good with that. But again, there's lots of liquor stuff in here as well. Nub cigars. I've enjoyed a couple of those. Not my thing, really. I don't just have to have a, a massive nub in the corner of my mouth. If you're a guy who just likes, you know, chewing on a cigar all day, that's definitely the one for you. Um, let's see, a little Eggs Benedict article. <laughs> Another uh, uh, ad. This is for a uh, Rocky Patel 20th anniversary. What do you know? Another booze ad. A thing on here. This is actually pretty cool. This is the Smart Humidor, which has an app that tells you what your humidor uh, is set to and everything. That is actually pretty badass. I would love something like that. And we're flipping through. Another booze ad. 
thing about darts, that's kind of random. Darts. I mean, I love darts, but what's that have to do with cigars? Cigar ad, Romeo and Juliet. A little thing about Mercedes Maybach S600. Car I'll never own. Booze. More booze. Booze and cigars. Now, I will say, of course, booze and cigars go hand in hand together. So it's not a big surprise that there's alcohol advertisements as well as tobacco advertisements in this uh, magazine. But again, you know, where's the substance? I want to see some articles on specific cigars, not liquor. Okay, it's awesome to learn about some different liquor stuff. But, you know, so far we haven't come across one article, essay, anything uh, specifically about a cigar. We have another ad, uh, Davidoff, another ad, another car thing. And now we're talking about expensive watches. I think something Philippe, I forget. I know you watch guys would be like, oh my god, you don't know about that watch. So our ad now is about the Ashford Castle in Ireland. Interesting, yeah, but kind of random. Cigar ad, cigar ad, that's fine. Someone's homemade flight simulator in their house, so who cares? Good whiskey. I have a bottle of that sitting in the cabin right now. Glen Morangie, 10 year old. Single malt scotch. Okay, now finally we're at the interview with Robert De Niro. Now this I can appreciate, dialogue back and forth, specifically because I love Robert De Niro as an actor. Uh, even as a person, he seems very, very fun, very whimsical. Um, but there, there wasn't really a specific focus on cigars, you know? <laughs> You think he'd be asking a lot of cigar questions. He goes, of course, into his history and his, you know, greatest movies. Obviously, Goodfellas, Deer Hunter, uh, Casino. I actually like Silver Linings Playbook. That's a good one. Um, Raging Bull, of course. Uh, Taxi Driver, awesome one. Godfather. I don't think I've seen Once Upon a Time in America. Sounds like a classic. I just happen to miss that one. Uh, who's that? James Woods. I like him. Another, you know, <laughs> ad for booze. More about De Niro. Cigar ad, watch ad, uh, De Niro, cigar ad, Johnny Walker, select uh, cask, 10 year uh, old, interesting. Not a huge uh, Johnny Walker fan, although if I do have a Johnny Walker, I think Johnny Walker Green is the best of all of them. I know everyone touts about Johnny Walker Blue, just because Blue Label is the most expensive. I don't think it has the best flavor. Um, I actually like the green the most. I agree 100% with Ralphie from Ralphie.com. If you don't watch him and you're into whiskey, you have to watch Ralphie. Um, and I think he said the first, that's the first thing he said. It was one of the first videos I ever saw he did was on Johnny Walker stuff. And he said the green's the best. And I ended up trying all of them, including the blue, which I didn't buy a bottle. I've actually got one of those, I don't know what size. It's like one of those mini bottles, which is still kind of expensive. When I was going through my whole like phase of trying every whiskey in the world. Um... And I agree with them, the green's the best, it just offers the most flavor. But anyway, uh, Monte Crisco. Uh, Monte Crisco. <laughs> Not the sandwich, Monte Cristo with a T. Um, what else, more De Niro. De Niro, which is cool because I like De Niro. Let's say you didn't like De Niro. What the hell, it's a bunch of wasted space, right? More liquor. Where's the, where's the cigar? Ad, um, not ads, there's plenty of those. Where's the cigar? Um, uh, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Essays. Where's the cigar literature? I don't just want to see ads. I want to learn about it. You're going to show me like a brand new cigar or something exciting. Tell me about it. Tell me, you know, what the wrapper is. What's the filler? What's the flavor profile? Is it strong? Is it you know, kind of medium bodied? You know, what's the deal? That all these ads should have a little blurb somewhere that gives some information so it, it piques my interest. Instead, it's like a big question mark, you know? More De Niro, which is fine with me because I happen to be a fan. Uh, Padron, double page ad here. It's very cool, awesome. Uh, I love the 1964 uh, anniversary series. All right, they got a couple of different sticks here on the bottom. Love that stick, but if I never had it before and I saw this ad, I wouldn't know what it'd be like. I just want more information, that's all. Uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm probably being too picky, to be honest. A lot of you guys are like, dude, it's just just a magazine, man. Obviously, it's full of advertisements. It's all about money. It's all about selling stuff. Ah, uh, Tony Soprano, James Gandolfini. So incredibly sad. I'm such a fan of uh, Sopranos. Every time I see him, it's it's really sad. It's like looking at um, 
you know, Robin Williams stuff. When Robin Williams movies pop up, it makes me sad now. Same thing, I see uh, James Gandolfini, and it just makes me sad that he's no longer with us. Anyway, another ad, another watch, another ad. Now, this is all about, you know, Donald Trump's golf courses. That's cool. You know, if you smoke cigars, there's maybe a chance you go golfing too. Expensive watches, expensive booze, expensive cigars, and now golf courses. It's obviously catering to high blue collar, you know, into white collar society. You know what I mean? Uh, not everyone's going to go out and buy $25 cigars and smoke them every day. Not everyone's going to go out and get, you know, a $15,000, $20,000 watch uh, or very expensive liquor. So this is kind of a, a high class um, publication. I mean, you don't have to be buying this stuff to enjoy reading about it, but uh, that is obviously who their audience is, or who they're catering to, is rich people. More booze, more ads, more ads, more ads. Now we got a whole section on football stuff. I'm a huge fan of football, um, but I don't need football updates in my cigar magazine. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if you don't already know, huge Giants fan. Another ad, all about the football. There's the Giants right there. Uh, Hennessy ad. You know, so you, you see where I'm getting here. I mean, I don't have to flip through the whole thing. This is this is what it is. When you finally get to the back, ooh, expensive watch. Ooh, expensive booze. Expensive watches. What is that? What is that called? Mm. Trying to find, there was one specific one in here I actually did like and I was looking at, but way above my budget. Hmm, I don't remember. Um, add, add, add. Okay, this is where I finally got excited. This is kind of the meat and potatoes of this magazine to me. Information about cigars. What do you know? Cigar? Whoa! Look how upset I am. Knocking my tripod everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes I just forget I'm talking in front of one. Cigar, this is what I wanted to do. I want to flip to the front. Cigar aficionado. Okay? Not booze and rich things magazine. Um, yeah, this is what I want. I want to see what their rating is on certain cigars. See if I've smoked any of these, what they think of it. You know, the prices on here is pretty interesting to see. And obviously all this other information, right? Where it originates from, its length, uh, ring gauge, all that kind of stuff. That's what I wanted to see. So we have a couple pages of what I wanted to see, all about cigars. Yes, cigars, believe it or not. All right, this is good stuff right here. The cigar information. Ah, now we're talking. But guess what? Now there's the owner of Gurkha. In case you're ever wondering what he looks like, that's him right there. So if you're smoking a Gurkha, you can thank him. And uh, he certainly appreciates your money. This thing. These uh, humidors, they're trying to, they built them to be uh, period correct. Let's see, the bottom one, there's only five made. It's made of uh, carved camel bone. Sold for $115,000. That's a lot of clams. There's Mr. Gurkha in his warehouse. Just chilling, smoking a cigar. Looking at all the money he's making. These things. Packed in individual coffins, Gurkha... Marajas, Marajaha, I forget what that word is. I actually recently had a Marajaha uh, from, <laughs> what the hell was it? It was a, uh, one of the beers, I'm trying to think of, Avery, Avery Brewing Marajaha. Delicious beer, uh, I can't say the name, but uh, yeah, anyway, those cigars are two grand a piece, $2,000 each. Now, I love cigars, I really do, so much so that I use one of my free magazine subscriptions for, you guessed it, Cigar Aficionado. But I don't think even if I had the money, I would ever spend $2,000 on one cigar. That being said, if someone gave me $100 million, I might bite the bullet and get one just to see what they're like. So anyway, uh, yeah, so I finally get some cigar information, and guess what? We're at the end with a big ad for another expensive watch. Um, so, you know, you tell me, am I being too critical in thinking that this should definitely have more cigar information? It's like 90% advertisements, which, again, totally understand. It funds the whole publication, okay? So they need the, the revenue they get from their advertisements. That's fine. And they, they are, in my opinion, appropriate ads. 
Um, the cigar ads, definitely, without a doubt. The booze ads, yeah, totally reasonable. Cigar and liquor do really go hand in hand. Expensive watches, a little bit random. Just because you like a nice cigar doesn't necessarily mean you drop 10 grand on a watch, but whatever, okay. Um, the articles that are in here, so far, the interview I, of course, loved because of uh, I'm a Robert De Niro fan. But if you weren't a fan of Robert De Niro or didn't really care that much, it's a lot of wasted space in here when you, as a you know customer of the publication, you want to see cigar information and you're not getting it. At least not as much as I thought. So uh, if you get this magazine, let me know if other issues are a little bit different. But I was just a little disappointed. I still liked it. I still had lots to read, you know, when I was taking a crap. So that was good. Um, and I did learn a couple things about some different cigars. And I did get to see some of the new cigars that are out now. But overall, I was craving more, more cigar information, less ads, um, and less random articles. I don't necessarily want to read about a castle in Ireland or Donald Trump's golf courses. I just want to learn about cigars. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh on this one. Maybe not. You guys let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. And thanks for listening to me rant a little bit on this one. So, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.